I'm going to get started and there may be people coming in, but let's just have at it. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is acknowledge where we are. And the way I'm going to do that is with this video. The Wollistagook, the place of the beautiful and bountiful river, unceded ground of the Mi'kmaq and Maliseet peoples. That's where we are, that's the land we're on, and we here in Fredericton in New Brunswick, we try very hard to acknowledge that and remember and express our gratitude for where we are. How are we for sound, good? It's okay. Um, while I have him here, this is Zach from, <laughs> right? And I'll explain who he is in just a minute, but here we go.
Okay, before I go any further, I have a few thank yous to, uh, to extend. First of all, um, to my dear friend and colleague, Adam E. Hilescu, um, this is a, a free gathering. Um, and it's wonderful that when I approached Ada about this, she looked into it, got it done, and here we are at the Beaverbrook Art Gallery, just an extraordinary place in New Brunswick and in Canada to get together like this and, and have this meeting. So thank you, Ada, and thank you to the gallery and everybody here, everybody involved. Um, we're also here because Anne and I had a conversation <laughs> about questions about what it is I'm doing with um, social media, uh, how am I engaging with um, online um, things regarding my own art practice? And um, hi, come on in, Danielle. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. That's great. Come on over. Have a seat. Come on over. Hi. Excuse me. Thanks. That's great. Um, what originally started out as a little conversation, like, oh, you know, we can meet next door in the cafe and have a little conversation. And then Anne said, oh, but I can invite Dawn, blah, blah. And then. And I said, well, well, then I said, well, let me talk to Ada. And then Ada had this idea of growing it. And then suddenly I'm like, my heart, right? I should tell you right now, I'm wearing my checker. And let me check in. And my heartbeat is at 106. <laughs> it's usually at 77. Anyway, it's OK. Um, and what happened eventually is we just decided that there were enough people to um, interested in some of the questions that Anne had that we would make the space available. So there may be people coming and going. Uh, in the next hour and a half, perfectly fine. I know that there are some of you out there who are um, interested in some of the things that we're going to be talking about to hear about uh, about here today. And I just wanted to, to let you know how it is we got to this to this place. Um, I want to say first off that the video you just saw um, was the first artist video made by the team who's here today providing us with the recording and live streaming. Zach and Nicola from Aurora Productions in Fredericton, um, New Brunswick. So already, I've demonstrated to you what I think is at the heart of what I'm going to be sharing with you today. And it's about relationships. It's about relations. And who it is we relate with and who it is we don't. And we'll get to that in a minute. But Zach, are you able to stand up back there? There he is. Um, Zach, uh, Zach was just a baby when his mother and I started, actually, you weren't, even, you weren't even a baby. You weren't even in the picture yet. When his mom and I started working together at UMB, Joy uh, is the UMB photographer. And for all of my years at UMB, she's been photographing my work in one way or another. And Zach and his twin, are, who's not here, um, uh, have followed in their parents' footsteps, and they have this wonderful uh, business. And when I decided that I wanted to make an artist video, and let's be clear, not with the intention of what it would get me in terms of selling or anything like that, I wanted an archive for my kids. And for Keswick Ridge, what you saw, those of you who know me, you know that's Keswick Ridge. Those of you unfamiliar with uh, the geography here, it's about 20 minutes upriver from where we're standing right now. And, um, I went to Joy and I said, can you help me with this? She said, well, you know, my son is starting this business, you know, and I said, okay, great. So we met and it was just phenomenal. And I don't know what you think and you don't have to say right now, but that's special. That's absolutely, indeed. So Aurora Productions, folks. <laughs> okay. So um, relationships. In, um, in preparing for today, um, you probably, you might have thought, oh, she'll have a PowerPoint or she'll do, well, I don't. And this is like what I have. What I thought was more in line with what we're doing here today was for me to work with the media that I work with. This is a first for me. <laughs> I've never presented where I'm going to be going back and forth between Instagram and my website and whatever. But I've put all that work into it and so I may as well use it. <laughs> it's a little bit risky. But my dear older brother said to me one time when we were thinking about going to Miami Art Week, I'll tell you about that in a minute, he said, you know, Jen, you can't hit a home run unless you swing the bat. Don't you love that? I mean, it's just like so American too, by the way. But anyway, that's true. So I'm going to swing a bat here today and go out on a limb and all those other metaphors that have to do with risk and, and see, where, see where we get. Okay, so the title of... Um, 
The title of today's uh, talk is uh, Traditional Petrol, Exclusive Electric, Happy Hybrid, Which Model Fuels Your Art Career? Because even though um, the questions were about, well, how do you do this with Instagram, or how do you do, and I'm going to learn more about those questions we all are in just a minute when I turn it over to folks here. In my mind, I started thinking, you know, that's not just it. It's not just about the nitty gritty of using those things. It's about what's underneath. And these phrases of uh, the happy hybrid, uh, this is something that I've come to within an artist group that I belong to called Art Next Level um, Academy, another relationship, learned about it by artist Vicki Lentz, you know, fast forward, and so on. Okay. But the rest of it is, is my take on it. And it, it, and it is that question. It's like, what do we want for our careers wherever, we're, wherever we are in our stage of life? So for me, I just had a birthday last Saturday. So did Anne. <laughs> Happy birthday to both of us. I'm a few years older. OK, double sixes for me. Um, but at 60, I retired from the University of New Brunswick. I was art education professor here. And in that context, in terms of my art career, I played by the university rules. I was constrained by an academic framework. Danielle's smiling. I, so that meant that my, anything I did visually, any kind of visual publication I might engage in, had to be juried, right? Just like a, an article or a chapter in a book or a book, right? The criteria for all those traditional ways of, of publishing held for the visual. Now, I, a side note, again, to relationships, um, I, I came on to UMB because the University of New Brunswick has in its collective agreement that binding policy between faculty and administration, it, under research is the line creative work. It's seen as legitimate scholarship. Hard to do, hard to maintain a visual practice while you're doing the rest of the stuff you're doing as a professor, but I did it. And we owe that piece of, of uh, policy and what it has meant for, for myself and others who came before me, because in, before me there was Peter Thomas in the job that I had, there was Tom Smith in the job that I had, here we go, those for you, for you folks out there, those wonderful New Brunswick artists, um, and again relationships, but I owe it to Jerry Clark who's sitting there, who was the dean who hired me, and with um, his friends wrote the first collective agreement and ensured that that creative dimension was in that piece of policy. He, he also married me a few, a few years ago. You know, but, but anyway, um, so, so constrained by, by that. And, and I you know, did the best I could. And I have a publication record that shows that I worked visually. In 95, I was thinking too, what is my relationship with all this media stuff? And then I started thinking, I submitted the first electronic portfolio at the University of New Brunswick in 1995. I did all the original drawings and we, did, we used director. I mean, it was crazy. Um, in 1996, I organized a conference with a play on, remember the old AV? Do you remember audiovisual, the audiovisual department? This was AAVV, actual art virtual viewing. So the ideas of art and new media have been around in my psyche for quite some time, <laughs> I, I come to realize. Um, in any case, the, I felt the responsibility to publish visually, but again, only within juried uh, context, only with galleries representing my work, not me representing my work in ways that I'm representing it today. And that's where we're going to get to. So when I retired at age 60, it was like, woohoo! What can I do now? Like, I am ready. Sounds silly, I know, but I don't know about you, Anne, because didn't you just, am I allowed to say that? Similar age for your birthday, oh. <laughs> right? I don't know how you're feeling at the moment, but for me, right? For me, there is this um, wonderful sense of opening, but also a sense of urgency. Also a sense of urgency that, man, you know, it is now or never. You know, you, you got to like try it, see what you want to do or don't do. And the bigger question coming back to this is, who do I want to spend my time with? What do I want to invest in, generally? I mean, I, I have a family, I have kids, I have grandchildren, God bless. I mean, I have all that stuff that people have. I have a, you saw I have a dog. Um, and then I have this thing that I do, 
this art practice? Who do I want to spend my time with? Who do I want to have relationships with? Who's going to edify my life? Who's going to support my life? And who, who can I support in return? So for me, it occurred to me that I am indeed a hybrid. My, uh, my career is a hybrid career where um, I make use of traditional ways of, of representing my work and learning how to do some new things. But the hybrid is even bigger than that for me because I'm interested in ideas, and we don't have to get into it today because you may not be here for this, but I'm interested in non-duality. I'm interested in the in-between. The first show I had in New Brunswick in 1994, my first solo show, when Jerome Sabat, God bless him, and, and, and uh, Christina were with us, in the old faculty lounge, was titled Between the Lines. And it was between the lines, because I was literally painting between the lines of, of the power lines outside my window, leaving them out. Also between the lines of representation and abstraction. So the, the in-between place is a place I find most comfortable for me. And, I, and I'm grateful to have had this session <laughs> to sort of or prepare for, because I actually came to that understanding. So, all right. So, I can, we can go in any number of directions here today. Um, I can give you a little more backstory, if you like that, in terms of how I got to this. I could start with your questions. What would you like me to do? I'd like a little bit of a backstory. Backstory? Yeah. You got it. Okay. Because I know you've gone to the art next level, like we'd all stumbled right. that. Right, right. I dropped it before I started. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, there's been a big shift, I've seen, in the way Yes. So that was mine. Yep. What I what propelled you to that? What are you sensing seismically? What am I uh, sensing seismically <laughs> out there right. in terms of shift? Because we're all you know, yep. birds and trees and coal mines. Uh, and then how you made that shift. So that backstory is because that's okay. from going from all galleries. Right, from that, that yeah. academic yeah. constraint. Yep. I okay. All right. So everybody got that. So some backstory. All right, okay, um, so I retired in 2014, and my retirement show, because it, 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 the easy answer is it's a gradual shift, and it's a constant, right? And it wasn't like a time I, I woke up one morning and said, you know what, I'm gonna be a hybrid artist. I mean, like, that wasn't, right? 2014, I retired, and <clears throat> In 2010, I had a major solo show at UMB, and then after that, that traveled, and then I continued working with some of those images, and I tried to get it out of New Brunswick. And again, relationships. So we've been going to the Berkshires since 1994, Jerry and I. We have family that's Western Massachusetts, um, Lenox, Stockbridge, uh, those places. We have a place in, in a family home we get to go to in, in Beckett. And in 19... 94, 20 years prior, my first trip to Beckett, I discover something called the Artful Mind magazine. Okay, 1994. It's like, oh, this is cool. This is like, what? this is so great. It has stories about artists and has stories about, you know, galleries and educational stuff. Oh, maybe I could write something for, write something, right? Because I'm still in art education mode, right? Maybe I could write something for that magazine someday. Fast forward 20 years. I organized to get a show at a place called Good Purpose Gallery. Good Purpose Gallery, it was a renovated department store in Lee, Massachusetts. Big, big high ceilings, could take my eight foot by six foot paintings. I won't bore you with the details of that. I got that show, but I finally contacted the owner, operator, edi editor of this. Now it's like, this is, this is thin, like it's grown to be quite something. Anyway, turns out artists could buy space in this was my first experience with, uh, hold on one second, excuse my back. Let's do it this way. This wants to be a little bit slow. We don't know why, but we'll bear with me. Um, this was my first experience with contacting this person and saying, what's involved? I'm having a show in Lee. Um, what's involved with getting some promotional material in your magazine. And so she set out what that was. 
and this is a more recent one. And I signed on. I can't remember what I paid. I don't, we don't need to get into those dollars and cents. But that was my first ever earliest about starting to do some things under my own steam, my, my own agency. Um, it turned out that um, Harriet Candy and I became quite good friends. She, I, I love her. She's originally from Bronx, <laughs> originally from New Jersey. And um, I've con we've continued to work together since, since 2014. Um, and I'm, I was just trying to, we're a little slow with the internet here, so I'm not going to worry about it uh, necessarily. I won't worry about opening that. I wanted to show you, as I said, using the media to show you what I'm doing, how these actual documents have become things that are accessible on my website that folks can go out to and see and so forth. So that's 2014. That all went well. Back in my studio, working away. And in 2015, in 2015, uh, Jerry and I traveled to Sicily. And again, not for the first time. We were there in 98 for the first time, for about the 10th time in 2015. Again, relationships. Go back to the uh, spring of 2010. Alberto Mangel and his partner Craig Stevenson come for the Christina Sabat lecture. They arrive a day early. Nobody knows what to do with them. I'm standing there with them. And I'm like, well, you know what? Come on out to the ridge. I'll make a Parmigiana. We'll eat together. And that's what we did. While we're out there, they come out to my studio. Craig says, do you know he's a Jungian scholar? Do you know Jung's philosophical tree? No, I don't, blah, blah, blah. There's a group called Art and Psyche that I belong to. It's a group of Jungian, international group, artists, analysts, performers, all kinds of folks, all Jungian. I wasn't. I never theorized my work along Jungian lines. But I think your work would be perfect for it. That was 2010. No, 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 I wasn't ready. I was, no, no, I can't do that. Too scary. Finally, by 2014, he says to me, Jennifer, we kept in touch. Look, he said, you have to submit the conferences in Sicily. Your work is about your original landscape, right? You've got to do this. So I send it off, and as fate would have it, I was awarded the, the closing plenary session at that conference. But what happened at that conference is I met Joe Goodwin. Joe Goodwin is an amazing American, American abstract painter out of Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Who knew? We were in the Berkshires all the time, and our paths never crossed. It took us meeting, bumping into each other in the lobby in Sicily, right? Again, spontaneous kinds of things. And from him, he said, you know, and Ann, you're familiar with Studio Visit magazine. He said, Jen, I have an idea. I, I, um, I've published in Studio Visit magazine. Um, I think it would be a good fit. It's a juried magazine. This one was juried by a woman um, at the Tamarin Institute in Arizona. So this was my first experience with sending my work, $5, send an image, X number of dollars, 20 or 40 if you have more than, more than one. And, you, and if you are accepted, you can have one page or two pages. The first time I submitted, I did not get accepted. This was the second time I submitted. And there are are others. But that was another act along the way, Anne, of getting into the self-representation. What I didn't know would happen is I landed into cyber, like I, I hit on something in cyberspace with Studio Visit Magazine. Because what that mag, what they do, and this is out of, um, they're out of Boston, right? Yeah, yeah out of Boston. They have like 2,000 galleries and institutions that they send studio visit to. Just out, 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 send, right? Suddenly, I'm getting these emails from people. Oh, we'd like to represent your work. Oh, gee, could you, you know, uh, we're doing an art fair. And I'm like, whoa, what is going on here? Because I hadn't thought about that. And I got an invitation to talk to folks, to a Michael Joseph in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, at a place called Art Blend. And I thought, like, no, I'm not doing it. That's one of those darn vanity galleries. I don't want to have anything to do with a vanity gallery, right? Because that's that academic thinking. So pejorative, like so negative. And, it, and, and people can have framed them in that way. But what people don't understand is, and what I've come to learn, is that when you, here's another phrase, pay to display. When you pay, it's a marketing tool. It's a way to create relationships. 
So I ignored the first invitation. Another year goes by, I get another thing in studio visit, same kind of thing, and we're in Fort Lauderdale with my oldest friend from graduate school, CR, if you're listening, hey ya. Joe, happy birthday, by the way, Joe Goodwin, if you're listening, today's your birthday. Anyway, um, we're in Fort Lauderdale, and I'm recounting this story to CR, and he said, Jennifer, he said, Let, why don't, let's drive over, let's go see the gallery, what do you have to lose, let's go see. So I said, oh, all right, so we went, and we walk in, and it's this expansive space, they've since moved, and I'm looking around, and I'm just, you know, trying to be chill. <laughs> and, and the young woman who actually wrote to me was sitting at the desk, very, very warm, very gracious, um, welcomed, welcomed us. And I said, any, any chance Michael Joseph? I'm fully expecting, no, he's not here. He would, you know, well, yeah, actually he is here. Hang on a minute. So while I'm waiting, there was a space of the gallery with these extraordinary architectural photographs, beautifully, beautifully produced, these details that were so exquisite, and they were his. And when I saw those, I thought to myself, hmm, that tells me something. His work is telling me something about who he is and how he is. So we sit down, and I'm expecting just a quick conversation. Well, we got a ticket, right? Because we were there an hour and a half, at least, in conversation. And I went away. Um, with a question about whether or not I wanted to do some work with Michael Joseph in Fort Lauderdale and with, excuse me, um, with the art fairs that he participates in. Uh, we got home to, uh, back to New Brunswick and I was very blessed. That was uh, 2018. Um, very blessed that year and the year before. Um, I had some sales and I was creating a little, um, little, tiny little account for my art sales. And, you know, Jerry said, don't get too excited, Jen. You know, the government's going to take 50% of that, <laughs> right? Um, and so in trying to decide whether or not we would do any work with, and I say we because what I do involves my family, and first of all, Jerry, um, uh, in, in making the decision, Michael had sent me a number of links to artists he represents, and I emailed them, they wrote back to me. And Stan Adard from Switzerland, who does these cool electronic breathing things, said, if you understand that what you're signing up for is a marketing endeavor, and you're not attached to selling work, you're not attached to a sale, you're gonna be just fine. And I, and I thought, oh, that's, that's interesting. Okay, I need to think about that. So we, we signed on with Michael, we drove, and again, this is on my Instagram page, you'll see that I have a story highlight that says art and travel, art and family, um, and that's because, because it mattered to me at this stage of my life that whatever I do in my, my art career, uh, I wanted to do it with Jerry. I wanted to become part of the family thing. So that drive, we drove the entire length of 95, stopping friends and family along the way. We do the Miami Art Fair, and, and I just went for it. I had a 14-foot booth with 10-foot high walls. We launched the artist video in the corner. I'll bring it down here. I do have it right here for you. Hang on. That was my booth in... Uh, in Miami with the artist's video. I had my diptych. We, Andy from Joy Framing took off the frame, rolled them up, sent them down. I had them re-stretched there, and there we go. And I did more teaching about New Brunswick than you could ever imagine. So what happened there, and to your question too, is suddenly people are doing selfies in front of the diptych. Like crazy, like there's tons of them. That's why I wanted you to see. And I heard myself saying, you can t do a selfie if you tag me on Instagram. I never said that to anybody before. <laughs> I'm just like, whoa, wait a minute. But that's what it's about, like relationships. Sure, you want to do it? Right. You know, take a, take, do a tag, get a selfie. But the other things about this, too, were the relationships of, of doing this. There are people from all over the world, from every walk of life, young, old, in between. Um, I had conversations with people from Sotheby's. I had conversations with designers. I had conversations. I had a conversation with this 18-year-old kid. In he, he looked like, he identified as he, 
as a young prince, the perform late performer, you know, shaved up on one side, tatted, beautiful, and he's like, whoa, you know. And he says, and I said to him, can I just ask you a question? Like, I'm old. Like, what is it about this painting that, he said, you know, we have a lot of anxiety in our lives. I see this, I can just breathe, and I can relax. And the reason why I'm bothering to even say this as part of the um, explanation for how did I make the shift, how else can I reach those people? How else can I reach young people? Um, yes, I, I, I still want to have exhibitions in brick and mortar places. I, I mean, I have two jury sh shows coming up in Moncton in 2020 and 21. I'm, you know, it's part of the other hybrid. But I realized that, oh my goodness, you know, there is a way for me. I wanted to know how my work played in the glitz and glamour that is Miami Art Week when the whole city is taken over. It's not just Art Basel anymore. The whole city comes alive. And, and you know, you think like neon, like, yeah, you're right, like <laughs> times a gazillion. And here I created this little zen corner, which is what I wanted to do, this little zen corner. And to a person, they came in, they were quiet, they breathed, they relaxed. And they follow my work now, a lot of them. I didn't think about it at the time, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But that's another step, was that 2000 18 experience. How am I doing so far? Okay, so Can I just yes, to yes. No, no, you have week. all right. So my friend Roberto Bernardo, who and that's the other thing. Like there were people, there were people that I was connecting with on Instagram that I had never met in my life. Both of them were just around the corner from my booth. So my dear friend now. Yoki, if you're paying attention, I'm talking about you. She has a show opening um, in May in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, Yoki, Roberto Bernardo. Yoki was with Art Blend. Roberto was on his own, which was very challenging for him. He will tell you that, so I'm not saying anything out of turn. When, with Art Blend, I had to show up. We showed up with the work. They did the lighting. They did the signage. They did the, the book. They did all of that was what my, my money purchased for that time and I was grateful to it and they just accommodated us incredibly because <laughs> I love that one um, uh, it was much harder as, a, as an individual artist like with these fairs you have versions you could do an individual artist you could go with a gallery you can go so for instance I believe um, wasn't it last year that gallery on Queen went to sofa mm -hmm. they did the sofa show right so there's there's that's an, another example Michael just, uh, gallery just got into sofa uh, this past year. In any case, that's that. So fast forward. Now, in preparation for Miami, Megan Darling, my dear daughter, you said you were tuning in, so this goes to you. Um, in the summer before, December, this was December, Megan said, you need to be on Instagram. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm the one who taught critical theory and cultural studies, like, you know, the underbelly of technology. Right? Ursula Frank Franklin's real world of technology, how it's going to like shape us and make us do crazy things, and of course it does. Um, but it doesn't have to be that way, is what I've come to, to learn, at least not for individuals. So Megan got me going on Instagram. She's my in admin person. I said, great, I don't want it interfering with my studio practice. I just, I don't, just, you know, I'll give you access to my photos. Give you so she starts, and suddenly, this was interesting, by the way, our relationship changed because suddenly she's posting things and I said, is that how you see me? <laughs> it was in a good way. Yeah, you want people to know something about how you cook too because your cooking is linked to your painting. And anyway, it was great. So I started right supplying her with things and then Miami comes and then January and by that time, Megan's pregnant with our with her second son and she said, Jen, I'm so sorry. I, I have pregnancy brain. It's like you need to take it over. I said, okay. And at that point, I was ready to curate my own page because that's really what Instagram, the way I would talk about it, is. It's storytelling. It's a way to tell your story. It's a way to curate your work, your page. And if you think about it that way, it's really kind of cool. What's really cool is it doesn't have to stay up forever. Like when I leave here today, I'm going to take this bag talk down and make room for something else. Like, I mean, you, know, you can, anyway. But I didn't know a lot. I had to play catch up. I had to literally learn how to do things. Return to that uh, business about uh, 
uh, Vicky and meeting Sergio Gomez, which I want to get to here. By the way, um, Threads of Justice is an exhibition he's just curated, and a shout out, as I've learned to say, shout out to Vicki Lentz, who has a piece in that show, and it opens on uh, tomorrow, yeah. on Friday. So um, what I did uh, that February is I, I wasn't ready to sign on with the Art Next Level Academy. I just I couldn't imagine committing my time to that. So I just wrote to him and I said, would you consider a one-on-one? -on -one? Can we have a one-on-one -on -one conversation? He agreed. We had a chat. He looked at my website. He looked at some things. His son looked at my website. It was kind of interesting getting a 19-year-old or 18-year-old's uh, um, response to things. Very positive. Um, and then that was that. Fast forward to July of last year and Michael uh, wants to know if I want to do the Hampton, Hamptons Art Fair in uh, Bridgehampton, New York. And I decided I had done it in a small way the year before just to see what an art fair was like before Miami. And it was amazing. Artists from all over the world, under a single tent, like I could see you know, stuff from Japan and things from Russia. I could see, it was just amazing. It was very cool. And I was very invigorated. And you could see it energized by it. So I said, OK, let's do it. So. In preparation for Hamptons, um, by this time now I'm doing my own, my own posts. In preparation for Hamptons, I decided that I would try my first Instagram ad. And I didn't know how to do it. So I have things on my phone, um, Snapseed, things to deal and make, make, you know, the what, advertisements and so forth. But Sergio, in his very generous way, I direct messaged him and I said, do you have a minute to take a look at this text? Because I was still writing like an academic. I was still writing, which is fine. And what this comes to is, who's your audience? And I've realized that I don't have a single audience. The audience is multiple. There's you today and what you make up as a kind of audience. There's an audience out there. I don't know who they are right now listening to this. There's an audience when I'm in a, a, a group of uh, Jungian scholars. There's an multiple audiences. So what I wound up doing, instead of writing one ad, I wrote three for different, for different populations. I mean, they basically gave the same information, but their tenor and tone was a little different. And I, I owe that as a thank you to, um, to Sergio for looking at the text and giving me some ideas like, hey, you know, these people don't know you yet, so maybe what you need to say is. Very, very helpful. So this is, I just, if you can see this, his name is Kando. He's from Montreal. Um, he was just around the corner from me, and I love this image of him looking at my work. So I had the back wall, these pieces, and from those ads, have any of you ever done an ad, an Instagram ad? Okay, so what happens is you get to choose where you want it to go. You can choose countries, you can choose cities, you can, right, for what's called the reach. So I did all of that. And then after, I started looking at who was responding. Suddenly people were responding. And there was this one called Idea Bakery. I thought, that's kind of an interesting name. I'm going to check that out. Then I get a direct message from this person and asking me about this painting, about this painting, which is over the pond. I left out Bologna, but Bologna's above. We could talk about Bologna after. Anyway, um, and from that moment, from that early week of July, she and I went back and forth. She was in Istanbul when she wrote to me. She lives between Atlanta and Istanbul. And I, I can speak about her publicly because she just posted, as fate would have it, two days ago, she posted the painting that she purchased for me, which isn't this one, actually. And, and Serfi is a marketer. She, she does marketing for like Coca-Cola and high-end cars and bare aspirin. And, you know, like she's, and she was just this person who happened to see it, who happened, happened to happen. And again, that, isn't that how relationships sort of happen in life? Don't we sort of put ourselves in a way, I don't know, like out there, but we bump into people and people bump into us and, and there's chemistry or there isn't? At the same time that Serfi was asking me in, while I was at Hamptons, a woman named Iris Moulet came in. Um, the two little paintings that were on the back wall, two of the Bologna paintings, because I had been in, we had been in Bologna in March before this for, again, um, an invited show with 91 artists. Um, this Iris uh, is a 
a therapist in Bay Ridge, New York, and she bought two little ones. So here's a stranger, because I'm at a booth standing there. She happens to walk in. We strike up a conversation. She has Sicilian heritage. <laughs> Go figure, right? So we're talking about Sicily. And she buys the two little ones from that, that endeavor, that effort that was made. And then, as I said, Serfi shows interest. It took all summer into the end of September before, in my studio, with, in a Zoom call, I actually, she decided not on the piece that, that was in the show, but the piece that she purchased, which was Sognante. And I have to tell you, that whole experience in between, you know, of, you know, do I contact her again? We said we were going to talk, all of that. I mean, that's, it's interesting what, what's involved in representing yourself. But um, I'm going to stop there right now. That kind of brings us, is that okay? That kind of brings us up to today. Is that too, is that too abrupt? I just want to stop there because I think there's, there could be some questions here that need to come from you. Are there any questions coming from folks uh, from Facebook? Okay, so what was so great about working with Serfi is the painting arrived, I mean, here at Joy of Framing, and I have pictures of, you know, loading it into, and Andy taking it off the stretchers and rolling it up and getting it to her, and it gets to her house, and she unfolds, and she takes pictures, and, and I'm on FaceTime with her with the, um, with the framer, right? Because she, she wants me to... She wants to show me what she's thinking about in terms of framing. I mean, it was just, it was great. And we have become friends. Again, relationships. So the shift, your question was, making the shift from completely the academic world, constraints of having to be represented by a gallerist, by a curator, artist has hands off to this, has been an evolving thing for me. And I really like it. Sometimes people ask, well, what happens if you have something in a gallery there? Do you still sell it out of your studio? My answer is no. If I have something with a gallery, that's on the gallery. When I was represented here in Fredericton by Ingrid Mueller Art and, Art and Concepts Gallery, I never sold out of my studio. Hi, Ingrid, if you're tuning in, you knew I was going to say this. We, un we had that understanding. That's, you know, all of those relationships you, you, you craft, right? <laughs> Just like anything else, you work together with people and get as clear as you can on those things. Um, so I'm going to stop. I'm sure there are some questions now. So let's take a second. I'm going to get a drink here. I have a, yep, I'll show you. I have, what I have is, um, so in order to do the, what I do with Instagram, you have to have a professional page. So this is my, well, you can see it up there, I'm sorry, uh, that, but I have Jennifer Pazienza Art Studio. And, and I use that to, to primarily, even though it goes to both, right? Because it does. Um, primarily, this is what I do when I'm posting about my, about my work. And in terms of my website, um, if I could just go back for a moment uh, with you, in combination, oh, we're good. In combination, um, bringing it to the present and the small work challenge, which we'll get to, which was a, my most deliberate attempt at dealing with um, the business, the sales part of Instagram. Um, within our group of the Art Next Level membership, I had, as some of you may know, because Anne, you were there, I had a, uh, we had a, a open studio. In, in December, and um, the works were he that were in the studio were for sale out of my studio. Some people handle their websites differently. Um, there's some beautiful sites like Artwork Archive where you can catalog everything and easy sales. I'm not that comfortable yet with putting prices on my paintings. So on my website, so I edit the studio page and the collections page was my way of sort of categorizing my work and familiarizing people with the work. There are groups of paintings, and this is done in Squarespace. Squarespace likes threes, I, I came to realize. So you won't, find, you won't find prices 
on the collections page, but in this past year, I added 27 squares. I added the art shop, works on walls. Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I'm wondering, and I, I think, you know, in some ways what I, what I hear from your question, Anne, is, you know, what do we do with the relationships that we worked hard to nurture and we maintain a lot of respect for with gallerists? You know, how do we bring that into this more contemporary way of being online? And I'm wondering, Jen, how you feel about the idea that I'm going to throw out there, which is that we might think about it as artists rather than turning away from our galleries. Absolutely. Rather yeah. creating what will eventually, what I guess is, is in kind of relationship where the on, online exists, there's an expectation yeah. as artists that we're there, and that anything that we do that's positive online reflects well on them, and so it's a give and take rather than a, yeah. a so leading. Can I jump in? From. Please. I want to be absolutely clear in case there's any, um, I'm first of all, I'm not promoting anything here um, in terms of this hybrid model that I'm, or way of being that I'm talking about. Your, your question, what do we do with those relationships that we nurtured? We continue to nurture them. If they are relationships that are respectfully worth nurturing, and only you can decide that. Only you, I haven't turned away from galleries in Fredericton in the sense that I never want to show in a commercial gallery here. That's not so. But what I want to do right now is see what's possible separate and apart from signing on exclusively and it's exclusive to a commercial gallery. I have great respect, f I mean, look, I'm a, a career art educator. I have incredible respect for the, the role of galleries in a community, right? It's a popular, literally, for the citizenry. I totally get that. I'm not, I have no interest in undermining that. I have no interest in writing over top of that. But I am interested in asking the question, which is yours, how can we work differently in this coming decade? Can we work together? And I think one of the challenges, and I don't have this completely thought out, I'm no expert, but I think if I were a gallerist, I think one of the challenges I would have is like, I'm somebody who's like, yes, yeah, sign me up. I am ready to do my part in, let's see what my, but maybe you're not. And maybe you're, so imagine what that means for a gallerist, like doing one thing for some per one person and something for somebody else. I mean, that's something that gallerists are gonna have to in, in their lives, figure out what kinds of relationships they want to have with artists too. What I'm about to share with you, the work that I did for, um, on, on all of this, from Jerry from when, like October, November, I mean, it was all consuming. And I was just representing one person, me. And by the way, I'm very careful about using the word representation. I mean, think about it. Nobody likes the word self-promoting. Oh my God, she's so self-promoting. Oh, he's so self-promoting. One of the things, so membership group, the Art Next Level group I'm in, is, which I love about is, can we just like stop judging each other and just look at what people are doing and try to be as supportive and edifying as possible? But, you know, the academic part of me says like, okay, what's wrong with that word promotion? Is that what you're doing? It's like, no, I'm, I, you know, what I'm doing is representing myself and my work out there in the world. And not just because I think it sounds better, it's what I really think I'm doing. And there are times when it has a promotional dimension to it, I was taught in this group how to write my own press release. I have written press releases for all kinds of people in my career as an art professor. I have written references. The things that I've done for myself this past season, I have done for others I can't tell you how many times. It's different turning it on for myself. And to be clear, I come from a Sicilian Italian family. Don't speak till you're spoken to. Children should be seen and not heard. There's always an intermediary. You never ask for something directly. You always have to have an intermediary, right? I mean, I have that baggage, and I have that academic baggage, and that old art world baggage that says, your work couldn't possibly be worthy if it has a commercial, any commercial appeal. Well, you know what? I've decided, let somebody else worry about that. That, that can't be my worry. So, but Danielle, I think you're absolutely right. Those of us who want to try some things differently, we just need to try them. You know, and surround ourselves with the people who help us support, learn how to do that, support us. That's why we're here today. That's why I stayed on. So what I didn't tell you about the Art Next uh, Level group is in July when we were with our new grandson and I was, we were in Pennsylvania for five weeks, I thought, how can I use my time productively? I just happened to see a Sergio Gomez podcast specifically about Instagram. 
And it was, a, it was a, an offer like, I don't know, 20 bucks, sign up for the month of July. So, okay, I can do that. I signed up and I did all the tutorials. I mean, the information is unbelievable in the academy. And, and it's stuff I know. I know about artist statement about this, but when you really look at it, there was still a lot that I could learn. But it was the Instagram part that I really paid attention to and it was a game changer for me. So much so that I stayed on with the group, which then led to the Small Works Challenge this past winter. I'll just tell you really quickly about it because it's the most, that, um, came from that, that came from that group. The Small Works Challenge, let me just get you to it. Is that like a mentorship relationship or? Yes, and now I'm doing the, um, and I can show you. This is the website when you become a member. This is the website. Every Sunday night, there's, um, there's something for me to think about and do for the following week, right? So there's that kind of support. There's uh, live Q&A sessions on Facebook. The ones that I really like are the brainstorming sessions where I'm in my studio on my computer and I'm talking to people in Italy and people in Vancouver and folks in Mexico and we're all in our studios and we're all you know, just trying to slug it out, which is so uplifting, supporting each other, giving each other ideas. Jerry and I made a decision that we want to live on Keswick Ridge. We hope to live there for as long as we can. Well, how do I engage with the world? I mean, this is like a way. It may not be forever for me. I may, you know, and as I move into this period of work, this coming year, um, I've said this in the, in the group there, I'm not so interested in selling this year. I'm interested in now the, the, this pendulum is swinging. I've got creation I'm focusing on. You've already seen some things I've posted with the dancer I've been working with. And I may do something that's deliberately towards sales, but that's not where I am. So you can, you can do with it what suits you. And it asks you over and over again, what do you want for yourself? What do you want for your career? Anyway, so going back to this, um, yes, go ahead. Is your Instagram account a business account? Yes. Okay. Yep. So 27 squares. So what happened was, and this is the thing that propelled me into trying to sell online. So I've already had an online, uh, an Instagram sale out of the blue in July. Thank you, God, the universe, and everybody involved. Amen. Serafi particularly. Um, but this was the first time, and it was the idea that could we create small works that were affordable for people who may not have the room, may not have the wallet, maybe young collectors, maybe. And the really cool thing, I, I just, um, again, it's about relationships, and I relate well to Sergio Gomez and his wife, Dr. Yanina Gomez, who looks after the wellness uh, portion of the program. She's a psychologist. I th the first thing he said, what is your story? what's your story, right? And I started thinking, well, you know, I, I joined in the, the Q&A, the and I thought, no, I can't do this. What am I going to do? Make prints of existing work? And, you know, what am I going to price? You know, I started thinking about all this stuff, and I thought, no, what is my story? And then I remembered Sergio's, his winter narratives are about his winters in Chicago after moving there from Mexico. And he's continued that winter narrative series and they are affordable works. And I thought, right, my story's Keswick Ridge. It is always Keswick Ridge. It has always been Keswick Ridge. The first thing I showed you today was Keswick Ridge. So once I understood, like, right, my story is part of my ongoing narrative. And my narrative is my life with Jerry, the life we built there, the, the, the art, I used to paint in my living room. We built that studio that you saw in 2007. These are all the pieces that, you know, from your question that led along the way. So once I knew that my story was, was Keswick Ridge and that I'd there 27 years, I thought, oh, 27 squares. Because I had the squares made from the Bologna show, which, by the way, was four eight-inch squares. That was the creative challenge for that exhibition in Bologna in March. I thought, right, I'll just put, I'll put 27 of them. And they echo my early work, which is the long, skinny. And my show, November, December, in, in Moncton, is titled Embracing the Square, Love Poems from the Ridge. It's curated with Paul Bork. So once I had that story truthfully, I swear on my, sorry, I swear on my parents' grave, um, I really didn't care about the selling part. I, of course, who doesn't want to sell something? And I'm not just being self effacing I really, it was like I had my narrative, it was great. And you probably saw as I was working, because I posted things, I worked the whole piece, right? And then the challenge was for me to get each piece to sort of stand alone, right? In case, 
And then it was like, well, then what do I do? How do I, how do I price them? Even how to figure out how to put a red dot next to something or a blue dot. Um, and then what I did uh, with Instagram is I, and it was, I think it was Vicky who said to me, if there's some way you could show like which ones are sold or so what I did was I just copied all the squares and I made a black and white version of them. And in Canva, you asked me about Canva, in Canva, which is a great free app, and by the way, the other thing about being in this group, I, I noticed today before I came in here, somebody in the group has some new app that's gonna help us do whatever, so I'll go check it out when I go home. But, but you can get a little nutty with it. So you pick and choose what works for you. Canva works for me. So I, I started putting, you know, the, I just literally over top the ones that sold and, you know, said they were off to their forever home. And it was fun. It was fun. And I guess the other thing, you know, where I started out earlier, like, I am not an ostrich. I do not live with my head in the sand. I know that there are horrific things going on in the world. In fact, we don't have to go very far to experience horrific things in the world. But if I can live joyfully and through my work convey that joy, not that it doesn't have undertones of things, go look at my painting that's here in the McCain show, there are broken branches in there, folks. Um, that's, that's what I want to do and how I want to do it. One of the coolest things that I learned about Instagram that was a, a game changer for me, so this was about um, the, uh, the McCain show. Well, there's a young woman, Lilie, if you're listening, she's in the UK, she's a young art historian. And one of the ways she's trying to make her way in the world as an art historian, in addition to doing the traditional art historical, whatever, you can buy some lines of text from her. And she writes about your work in the context of things and puts them on her, her Instagram page and they go out, right? And she and I, long before, I mean, I knew about her for about a couple of years before I decided to go ahead and, and hire her and invest a little marketing that way. Great email conversations. We've gotten to know each other. And, you know, next time we're in London, we will see each other. Um, but the thing that I learned, if you go down my page, you'll see that a lot of my text is all bunched together, and, right? So I learned simple things like about creating more white space. But the thing that I learned in that first Instagram tutorial of Sergio's last July was about hashtags. Let me be clear about something. I don't care how many follow my page. I mean, who doesn't want to have like a lot of people love me? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I mean, that isn't it. What I care about is where my work goes. So the hashtags, as I understand it, and some of you may correct me after, but the hashtags that I use sends, if, if, the, if the algorithm gods and goddesses agree, and how often do I post? When I was doing the Small Works Challenge, I was a trooper. I posted a lot <laughs> and often. Now, I, my, t my way is to post Wednesday, Thursday, on the weekend, maybe a Monday, How's your week going beginning? And I'm just learning, and I need to do more research on this. I'm learning how to use stories more and how to, um, and I've taught myself how to use IGTV. So for things that are longer, I can put longer kinds of things. So I post a minimum of, um, during this kind of period that I'm in, four times a week. But when I was doing the Small Works Challenge, um, with the guidance in our group, we were posting pretty regularly almost every day. And a friend of mine said, Jen, like I'm seeing your stuff almost every day. I said, yeah, I said, you do. I said, but there are people who haven't. And that's the thing to remember. Like you think the same people are seeing things all the time, but they're not. Anyway, I don't know, if, does that answer the question? Is that good? Okay. Yeah, so the thing about hashtags that I learned in that first session is that, um, I, I don't know about you, but like, do you know what they're for? Like what they do, how they function? Yeah. Do, Brilliant, how they... Yeah, they, they're, they're content organizers. And so they send your work to a page. And one of the things uh, in the tutorial, Sergio recommended, he said, post, wait about 30 minutes, click on your own hashtag, and go to it. And then suddenly, there was my work on Canadian artists. There was my work on in my studio. There was my... Right? The other thing he recommended is have some uh, lower-numbered content pages where there may be only 500 to 1,000 pieces on the page, go middle, go big, go, right? 
And that's what I did, and I started paying attention. And it was very, very exciting. And um, I've had people repost my work because of that. Yeah? Another thing that I'm learning about the hashtags, too, is when you start to put them in, like when you compose them, there's some that are really obvious, like the people from Art Gallery, right. where we are, um, or Jen, yep. Jen Pazienza. Yep. Um, but on Instagram, when you start to type it in, like, and if you feel like you're kind of you not like skids and dogs or yep. whatever, yep. Um, it'll tell you popular versions of it. You can see how many people have posted, feel like how popular that hashtag exactly. is, and therefore, how, like, if you click on that thing, that's how many people are using it, and how likely someone else might click on that same wording arrangement, right? rather than using random ones that maybe no one's ever going to search because right. you made up some. Yeah. But I did make up two of my own. I have two. One is, yeah. one is stick to your vision and one, no, no, but that's good. Real art in real places. The thing that, that to keep in mind is, and, and this is kind of like, we don't know who's scrolling through those. I don't know who's scrolling through those pages. But the point is to get them onto page, onto walls, excuse me, onto walls or, you know, where people may see your work, because I know I've done it. While I'm looking to see if mine's there, I see some other artist like, oh, let's go, and I'll go to that person's page and look at their page and what they're doing. Um, the other, so that was, that was an important thing for me to learn. It seems like a small thing, but it was kind of, kind of a big thing. And to Dan Danielle's point, uh, at Christmas time, excuse me, Christmas time in our family, at, at the end of the year, at the end of the, the seasonal time of December, November, December, I started thinking about, well, what hashtags would work for the Small Works Challenge? Like, what should I? So I just started trying out hashtags in the little search thing before I posted anything and seeing what was on those walls. Because maybe I don't want my work on some dicey, <laughs> you know? So, so I like the research part of it, too. Um, I'm just going to step back for one moment. My original, when Megan had me starting with Instagram, Jerry can tell you, um, the art educator researcher was really strong. I was so excited to be seeing art from all over the world. I thought, man, if I was still teaching, I would teach it critically, the underbelly of this stuff, I totally get it. But how cool, you know, to, to open up my art historical knowledge, both past and contemporary. I mean, I can't buy enough magazines. I mean, I, I still buy magazines. I'm, I'm still all about print material as well. Don't misunderstand me. But it was a really great way to, to continue learning. And there are where this started incredible relationships. Um, I, I'll just tell you one very quickly. I don't know why. Jatin, if you're, if you're listening from Mumbai, um, Jatin Khan is a, a self-taught painter. He has a background actually in medicine and in literature, and he comes from a, a family of document. Father was a documentary filmmaker. He describes his mother as uh, um, she was a contemporary singer, the likes of Madonna back in the day. And he really wants to be uh, an artist, but he wants to do it under his own steam. I have no idea why he chose me, but he wrote to me, direct message, introduced himself. I thought, okay, what's going on here, right? Because you always have that little freakiness, right? And so I said, if you want, if you want to talk, please email me. He emailed me, and a relationship began. I have curated and edited his portfolio. I have um, hel helped him answer questions, like art, all kinds of art educational things. He just did the Bologna show, the one that we were in in March. He did the November version with curator Paolo Trevisan that I worked with then, and that's just so cool, you know? I mean, and so as a retired art education professor, I still get to do the educational part of things as well. I still get to do volunteer work. Man, nobody paid me to, you know, I, I, I deliberately, right, asked that this be a free gathering because I did not want to make money on this today. I wanted it, it's part of my volunteer work. It's like, you know? Um, and so there are dimensions of, of social media that, and in this case particularly Instagram, it isn't just about selling your work. It goes back to relationships and how you want to live your life how you want to live your life generally and your, your life as, as an artist. So when Megan and I were working together, my daughter and I, um, we used uh, something called Planoly. Maybe you're familiar with it. And there are other kinds of organizing um, apps that you can get. But Planoly, uh, what that let her do was, you could see it looks, it echoes what, what uh, Instagram would look like. Um, she would put up choose things um, that she would want to post, and she'd ask me to take a look at them, and what did I think, and so on. And so um, 
I kept working with it with myself. I don't use Planoly so much now in terms of this organizing part. Uh, if I wanted to, and I may try it this year, this, this season, I can schedule posts. So to the person who asked about how many times do I post, and in terms of making your lives, depending on how your lives work, I could, I could organize all of my posts for the week, like on Monday, and not worry about them and just have them go. Um, I like the flexibility, though, if something comes up. That's me. But what I do use a lot is I have, um, I have hashtags ready to go that I change for different categories, right? For sale, Fridays, new work, painting, Thursday, website, whips, works on walls, things that relate to the general title. So I'm ready to just go with them instead of having to write them in every single time. I may add, like you were saying. Go ahead. Linktree, sure, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Um, let's come up here. OK, so how this gets designed, um, and I, I'm, you can change it from time to time, how, how you have this. Um, so I am an exhibiting artist, an art educator, an art professional. And I can be direct messaged or emailed. But then Linktree, from, the, from your Instagram bio, that area of the Instagram page is called your, bio, your biography, um, you can only have one URL. And most people have their website. But I have other things out online that I want people to get to. So um, in working with Megan, Megan said, we can, I'll set you up with Linktree. Now I can do it myself. But what you would see is a list of URLs. So my website, Small Works Challenge, which I'll say something about in a minute, the Aris paper that I gave in Sicily, which was published online, you know, things that I want people to know about my work. And in my, in my comments, when I'm posting something, because because links aren't clickable in Instagram, URLs are not clickable in Instagram, right, under, in your comments. I mean, you could, I jokingly say, oh, come on, folks, you can remember this. It's easy. It's Jennifer Pazienza. Like, it might, I'll joke, right? But what I can say is you can go to my bio, right, in Linktree. And people will click on it. They'll go to my website. They'll go to whatever. And it's a way of having more than one URL. to talk about, oh, there it is. This time it worked. OK, there you go. So these are my Linktree. And 27 squares got people to my 27 squares page because what I, right? I wanted them to get there sort of right away. Just a, a little side story. I tried having a newsletter, too. And what I did with this small works challenge, because I thought, oh, this will be fun, is um, for uh, newsletter people, and before they went live on Instagram, and before that they, uh, people saw them in my open studio in December, I created um, a secret page, which was kind of fun. It's just to create it, the, the, 20, the 27 squares page, but it was disabled. And the only way you can get into it is if you had the password, which was 27 squares. But what I realized, most of the people <laughs> that were sort of looking at this were sort of older. <laughs> and they, I know, Zach, you're, they didn't quite, you know, like, well, you know, and I tried so hard to make it as clear as I could about, you know, about, it was kind of fun. But anyway, it was still fun to do. It was fun. Fun to play and try it. Yes? So My website is Squarespace, yes. And I could. I spent a lot of time putting um, a shopping page through Squarespace, but it was just, it, it didn't suit the feeling that I wanted for my website, my, my web page. So what I have, go ahead, pardon me? You can't shop on your web page? Yes, you can shop on my web page. You can go to what I call Art Shop, and I tell you how to do this, but there isn't an easy, like, uh, Icon, car, right, one click away, which it can do, absolutely, which it can do. But Squarespace, again, was never initially for me about selling. It was about curating my work. And with 27 squares, and I did sell, folks did go to this, and they scrolled down, and they looked at things, and they emailed me, and was no worries how they transferred the money through PayPal. Internet connections? Uh, interestingly enough, most of the sales were from Danielle's term, nurtured relationships. So for example, I was very lucky in 2018 to have two paintings go to White Plains Hospital in White Plains, New York. 
the young woman who facilitated the installation of those works near the, and they're on my website. She's a young collector. She has a young family. I wrote to her and I said, um, you've been such a help to me. Take a look at these 27 squares. This is what I'm asking in Canadian dollars. I would be happy to give you a discount of, you know, to, for this in US dollars. Still respectable, respecting her, respecting the work. Um, and so she bought so my collector in Edmonton did, in Toronto did, um, a new person in New York as well. And some, <laughs> she's laughing over there. She was the first person to go online and look at the work and, and buy square number five. Um, uh, I had questions from Instagram this time. And I realize now in retrospect, I could have done some things differently too in terms of how I sold on, on, online. Um, but again, uh, it is about relationships, you know. Oh, and, and some others locally who had seen the work, who live here, saw the work. They went, they used a little password, whatever, and, and wrote to me and said, could I please have square 16 and <laughs> put aside and, you know. So one last thing. It's um, something I did in um, December, and you've seen people do it. You've seen them. Follower Appreciation Day. I just took a day where I had nothing else to do because you really need to have a day where you don't have a lot on your plate. And the most I think you can pop, put up stories is 100. And Jerry can tell you, I went down through the people who follow me and, and randomly posted their work. And I'll just show you some of the And that's just something I did in Canva. He's, you know, in a few minutes with one of my squares. And I let people know on my grid and I let people know on stories that I was just grateful. And it sounds kind of corny, but it was a great day, wasn't it? I mean, I was tired, but it was so much fun just remembering people and it reminded me of people who's, who I'm following. And I didn't invent this. This is something I've seen Sergio do and other people do as well. It was really fun to do. It was really fun. I've done a giveaway. Um, Amy Ash has one of my, my paintings. We did a, a grateful day online. People, I was thinking of a number between this and that. And by Saturday at 5 p.m. And I had people from all over the world saying, oh, is it number this? Is it number that? Is it? And it turned out it was Amy, you know? So, yeah. OK. Well. Um, I'm, I'm finished, I think, but I'm also here to answer any, I can stay behind for a few more minutes. So we'll thank you everybody out there and thank you all in here. Appreciate it.